one, you're in the right place, at the right time. Blasting out of the East Coast, like a ray of screaming across the land, and into your town, and into your home, slamming into your Mac, like a supercharged DeLorean running on plutonium. Greetings from an undisclosed location. This is Logic Pro Hacks. Hey, this is Brian from Logic Pro Hacks. Guess what's going on today? Yeah, that's right. We're doing a little bit of old school today. Decided to hack my cassette deck player and see if I can uh, amp it up a little bit. And so I did. <laughs> uh, you guys are going to like this one. So what I have going on here is I have a normal cassette deck. You know, I got a, you know, this guy in here. This is, let's take it out I'll show you what's going on. This is a regular Sony 60 minute normal position type tape. You get it Kmart. I think they still sell cassette tapes these days. That's where I got it at. I only get my underwear from Kmart. <laughs> well, at least my tape cassettes I do. Yes, that's a reference to uh, Rain Man there. <laughs> Anyways, so much fun. So what I do here is, is I hit the pause button and then I enable the uh, record play. And then look over here. I have a phone out. And this phone out is actually going into the input of this guy. And now you're going to say, well, where's the, uh, where are you getting signal from? Well, just hold up a second. You know, I want to show the front first, and then uh, now we'll go to the back. So, I showed you the front now. Now let's go to the back. <laughs> All right, hold on. Here we go. All right, guys, here is the back. And you can see here is the cassette deck. And you can see just a regular RCA type of, uh, connection but it goes to a 1 8 and here's the 1 8 see da -da, 1 8 stereo so we get a better look and that 1 8 stereo is my signal input so you can say it's it's basically it's the the output of this guy right here and you can see all right plug it in all right and then you see there's another one right here this is the signal in, and this signal in goes all the way up, and it's coming out of the EQ that I have in the front. So how this signal flow works is signal comes out of logic right there, output, and goes do 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 do, goes up in here, and then goes into here, blah blah blah, record in, put. And then it does its little magic, and then the headphones on the front of this unit comes out here, and then goes into this little weird-looking Y adapter thing. And you can you, it's made by Hosa, and it accepts one eighth input, and it's got a tip and ring, so it's a left and right one fourth, and it goes in my inputs. There's also another type of um, adapter that you can get that actually you can put into this type of connector and then on the other side is a 1 8th. I actually have one, but I couldn't find it today, so that's okay. And you can find those things on eBay too. And vice versa. So, But right now, this is what I have, and this works just fine. And then on the output of this thing... The output goes back in and goes back into the input right here. So well, let's just do this one more time. Just make sure it's clear. There it goes back into there. All right. So uh, signal comes out of logic. Goes into here. Goes to the tape. And then spits it back out on the phones. Phones comes back in. Or comes back out. And... And then goes into here on the input of the of the EQ. EQ does its thing and spits it back out into the imp line input of the Mac. Alright, got everything all set. And then up here is 
my audio box, which has nothing to do with this. It's just that I'm there, just being friendly. That's all. All right, let's go to logic and let's play. Ha ha ha! You guys can also like this. All right. All right, now we are back into logic, and what I have done is I've set everything up beforehand so that way I can just show you how I have it set up and how you can do this. Now, the first thing you want to do is you want to create an aggregate channel that is in your audio MIDI setup window, which is in your utilities folder and you can find the utilities folder in your applications directory and I'll go ahead and open it up and you get this guy right here it's called audio devices and in audio devices if this window is not open you just go window show audio window at your menu bar now in here I have you know a couple things set up I have a built-in line input and this is comes default with any kind of Mac that you have probably like a Mac mini or even a laptop would have this and I have a built-in line output I have that checked I also have my audio box which is my interface and then I have Soundflower you don't really have to have Soundflower for this to work I'm just using Soundflower so that I can get this to record on my other program that I'm using in Ableton so that you guys can actually hear all this stuff I actually have a video that I basically what you're doing is you're hacking with Soundflower to separate your audio and your and your speaking voice. And I'll go ahead and I'll link that in here. But back on subject, the uh, aggregate channel is, you know, you just do click this little plus mark and you just create a new one. And I just named it Ag Logic, you know, ease of use. And so I just picked those four. Like, again, you don't have to pick that one, but that's what I did. Two important ones is this built-in line put and built-in output. Now, granted, if you have a bigger interface, you won't need the line input. You'll only need, you, matter of fact, you probably don't even need to do an aggregate channel. You could just use your, your interface to do this. Like if you have one of those uh, really nice ones that have like eight inputs, eight outputs, you can just your, use your interface to do this. But right now I'm just showing how to do this because a lot of people, they just have a simple interface. I have an audio box USB made by Presonus and only has two inputs. And right now that one of those inputs is being used for this microphone that I'm speaking into. So then I asked the question, how are you going to create a stereo input for this to work? And you also need a stereo output. Well, I got you covered. <laughs> a Mac computer actually gives you these, which is nice. And they work just fine for what I need to do in this little hack build that we're doing. So we'll go ahead and make sure that all those are checked. Now keep in mind that when you do do these, you will have to restart Logic or Ableton, whatever program you're using. And you may even have to restart your computer for it to show back up into your, if we go into, was it, preferences, audio, and you can see how I have Ag Logic for input and output device, and you'll need both because you'll need it on your input and your output. So once you have that set up, it'll be good to go. Let me show you how I've set things up. Now I just have this one right here is just a regular audio channel. Now notice that on this audio channel, I have the output set for five and six. Now your output would be just regular stereo output or whatever output that you want it going to. Right now I have it set for five and six and five and six is what is going to my sound flower. And that's what's being recorded into Ableton so that you guys can actually hear this. So, but normally it would be a stereo out where my five and six would be. Let's go ahead and now this is just a regular instrument track. So don't now on this audio track, all I did is I just created a new audio track, you know, just create right here, just boom. And I picked input three and four input three and four is what I have set. Let's go to the audio MIDI window here. You could see right up in here, it says audio box. It's set for one and two input and output. Built-in line input is three and four right there. And that's what I want for my audio channel. So you can see input and it's going out to five and six. Input three and four. Output five and six. And then output three and four. Soundflower 
That's five and six. Now let's go move that out of the way. I created this audio channel and you can see right here, input three and four. So you just go in here and you just change that to input three and four. Boom, done. Now, my output right now is set to five and six, but normally that output would be your stereo output right there. But right now I have it set to five and six because in order for you guys to hear this correctly, I have to have it that way because I'm going to Soundflower. Anyways, just keep that in mind. Now, let's go ahead and let's just see what this thing sounds like by itself. Now, like I said earlier, I have it set for a stereo cassette, so it's going, the signal is going out of the Mac and going to the stereo cassette. The stereo cassette, doing its little processing through the cassette deck, and it's giving some nice warmness, analog warmness, and then it goes into this DOD 830QX equalizer, which I got it jacked up pretty much. <laughs> And, and then it spits it back into the input right here. And then it goes back out to the stereo. So let's see what happens. Let's see what we got going on here. So right now I have it set for not going through it. It's, it's at bypass. So, so let's just play it by itself. All right, so that's normal. Now let's change it to overdrive mode. <laughs> so switch to output three and four. So output, and you notice it creates a, a, a stereo channel right over here. So don't worry about that. It's normal. It's gonna go out here and then we have the input. All right, so let's see what it sounds now. Let's may have to turn this down just a little bit. Yeah, that's good. All right, let's see what it sounds like. So it does sound different, that's for sure. And it does sound uh, like a little bit wider and maybe a little bit tad warmer or duller. It depends on your preference. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to disable the, the, or bypass the EQ right now. And the only thing you're going to hear now is just the tape deck. So let's go ahead and play it now and see what it sounds like. <laughs> Now, you heard that I went and bypassed and then I enabled it. So let's go ahead and let's hear what it sounds like with just normal. So that sample right there is for a muted drum sample, and it's okay. You know, it's all right. I kind of like it. But what I really notice is when you put it on some drums, and that's where it really shines. So, hey, hey, hey let's let's try that now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and keep the EQ bypassed, and let's first let's play it just by itself on these drums right here. This is kind of like your toms. So, and this is just normal mode right now. 
Let's change it back to here to normal. All right, let's go ahead and play it now. All right. Now let's go ahead and let's play it in overdrive mode through a cassette deck only. Oh, wow. That's nice. See, you can really notice that it really amps it up. Now, let's go ahead and let's enable the EQ. And you can see that I have just a basically a, just a, a V shape. I have maybe a little bit of gain on each EQ. I have it set maybe like a 1, 1 1.5 on the scale here. You can see the scale. It goes from... A minus just a tad just a tad bit above zero is basically what I have for the gain this other one right here you, it doesn't really have a knob but I you can adjust it I have like a little small pair of scissors that I use to adjust it with you can see right here and I able to get in there and just get it right so I have it set and then you can see the pattern on it so let's just go ahead and see what it sounds like now <laughs> get ready for this Enabled, and let's go for it. Oh, that's nice. So, from what I'm hearing, is when we got both of these units stacked up together, you almost like it feels like it gives a nice little warm distortion to it, uh, a nice amplified overdrive. It just sounds really nice, especially on drums. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch back and forth to these other samples that I have. So let's do this one right here. Normal mode. All right, now let's go in amplified overdrive mode. All right, so uh, once it hits the hi-hats, it may be just a little tad too much. And I could tweak that with the EQ. I can turn on the EQ because right now I have the the highs really set really high. But this part right here, uh, this sounds really good. Just really amplified in your face. Now let's do this one. I think this is like some kind of bass sound. So let's see what it sounds normally. Now let's see what it sounds in amplified overdrive mode. Extreme mode, that's it. Oh, that's nice. All right. Now here's another one. Here's another bass. Let's do normal mode. Just by itself sounds kind of cool. Now let's go in extreme mode. <laughs> Definitely extreme. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'd want to use it. It just seems like it's a little too much, but I really, you know, if you're into that over-process sound, it, it, it would definitely work for you. <laughs> now let's go to this last bass right here. Normal mode. Extreme mode. <laughs> Are 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just definitely amps it up. This is just a cool little trick that you could do with any type of tape recorder that has like a phone's output. Let's go ahead and I'll show you one more thing. Let me show you this thing right here. Now, you could possibly, if you don't have a phone's output, you could possibly use one of these guys. You can see right now, this guy is playing, and what I have in here is the cassette adapter that you would normally find on a, a CD, like a car CD that you would stick in your car cassette, or like an MP3 player in, into a cassette deck in your car, if you have an older car. Well, the thing is, you could use the same thing to enhance the sound of your of your logic logic sounds. The only caveat is it has a very high noise floor, and I'll show you real quick here. So let's first, you know, you see the connection here. You have the little thing that's coming out, and this little wire is actually going into the input of the Mac and I'll show you real quick alright so it's going in the Mac you can see here's the uh, output from the Mac sounds going out from logic into the cassette deck adapter thing which is in the front and then on the back of this thing you can see now instead of record in you have this thing that's called out play or play output and that is actually doo -doo -doo -doo, going into this little Y adapter thing that it seems to be stretched a little too far it's going the input of the EQ and then the output of the EQ goes back into the input of the Mac so get that all straight alright so we're back in logic real quick and I want to show you what happens when you use a cassette adapter first let's go ahead and put that one audio signal to input monitoring. Now you notice as soon as I hit that input monitoring that you can hear the uh, the noise that's coming from the cassette and like I said earlier it has a very high noise floor. Let's go ahead and just play this thing with by itself without any effects. Here it is sounds by itself normally. Now here it is with the tape cassette. God, that was loud. And I also have the EQ bypassed. Now, let's do something crazy. I was actually enable the EQ with those crazy patterns that I got on it. I'm going to turn it on really low because it can be really loud. All right, now let's play it now. So, I mean, that's not bad, but I just don't like it because it, the noise floor in it is so bad when you use those things. But some people like to interject noise into their, their mix. I think it's just a little too much for my preference. So let's go ahead and just disable that right now. I just want to interject that real quick so you can do it that way. It's actually better to use cassette tape and or you could just record onto it and just play it back. But this is pretty good when you use the phone output and you put the phones right into the thing back into your system. So pretty cool. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. Just uh, another hack for this week. <laughs> All right, bye.